Uh, I'm James. Uh, it's nice to be here. I'll be a start. I just want to just check my blood sugar level. There we go. Um, now, I didn't always make my living as a stand up comedian. I actually used to be, true story, a TV presenter Ooh. on the shopping channels. Before anyone gets too excited, it wasn't quite the giddy heights of QVC, which some would say is the Champions League of shopping film. Now, I was on one of those uh, Sky channels. <laughs> you know the ones that you would end up on by mistake? Late at night? <laughs> when you were fish? <laughs> the channel, the cha I recognise that dress from somewhere. The channel was actually pretty hard to find, even when you were sober, right? Because it was like up there, I mean way up there in the high numbers. Like if you started in the 500s, you were getting nearer. 24 hour news, Al Jazeera. Just skip past the God Channel on Revelation TV. Into the 600s and CBBC. You've almost reached your final stop. Welcome to the world of Price Drop TV. If you've hit the station, you've gone too far. <laughs> now how does someone end up on Price Drop TV? Well, you need to start off with aspirations of doing something much better before fucking it up and lowering your ambitions accordingly. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming to my TED talk. <laughs> No, my dream was actually to present a uh, match of the day, right? But my mate said to me I'd be much better suited to Sky Sports News because I just keep repeating the same stories over and over. <laughs> Love making a big drama and everything. And if you've not been on the television before, you need to send in what's called an audition tape, right? Basically showcasing your ability to, to do the job. And I had to make up my own one, right? Because I'd never been on TV before. Now this was back in 2006. I was still living with my parents. Social media wasn't even really a thing. Like YouTube was just something that my dad used to call me. <laughs> so I had to actually borrow a camcorder, right? For the weird guy at the end of the street who seems to have all these things. And I had to get in my bedroom and film myself. Which... It looks like some people do quite regularly. <laughs> so I'm in my bedroom, I do this audition tape, and then I send it off to Sky Sports News, right? And I never heard anything. And to this day, I don't know why they never got in touch to hire me, right? Because if they'd watched the audition tape, they could have seen that I looked the part, or a shirt and tie, sounded the part, I said, Welcome to the new camp, it's Barcelona versus Real Madrid. And I acted the part, I never got distracted. Not once, not even just before kickoff, when you could hear somebody from the crowd shout, maybe from downstairs, James, your dinner's ready. <laughs> In case you're wondering, for years. <laughs> That's the old classical of dinner in Ethel's house. It's been about this time that I saw the film uh, The Pursuit of Happiness, right? It's a true story about a guy who gets his dream job, even though he was homeless, gets a dream job as a stockbroker by sending out his resume to every major firm in America. So I, inspired by this, I thought, I'll become homeless. <laughs> <laughs> I took a note of every Sky Channel, right? And I sent my audition tape off to them. My mum thought it was a bit weird when I had my pen and paper out flitting through the station channels, but my dad was very supportive. <laughs> and that's how I ended up on Price Drop TV. They were the only people that got back to me. Fuck the God Channel. <laughs> when I got to Price Drop TV, it was like, honestly, it was a bit of a, it was a, bit of a whirlwind. There was a lot of things you had to get used to, right? I had to do my own makeup, for example. Right. We bought a Mac NC40 and a bit of bronzer because I didn't want to look peely wally. <laughs> and I quickly figured out that you would just try and slap on as much foundation as you could to cover your stubble, you know? If I moved my head too quickly, it looked like I'd eat my man's fajitas again. <laughs> also got to get used to the fact that they love to exaggerate things on Price Drop TV. 
most of all the price. <laughs> Add up the stand there, right? And the price would actually start about 25 times the value of the actual product I was selling. And I'd have to put on a straight face and try and convince you that 195 pound was brilliant value for a non-stick frying pan. <laughs> Before practically faking an orgasm in it, it went to 9.99! <laughs> right, even a death one as well. There's other things I like to exaggerate as well, and it would kind of fuck you up. They used to love exaggerating their product descriptions to the point I didn't even know what they were selling half the time. I always remember one of the first things I ever sold on Price Drop TV was what they described as a multi purpose, lightweight communication device. Anyone? Oh, a fucking pen! <laughs> <laughs> On a normal day of price drop, I need to sell about 25 different products in the space of three and a half hours. Sometimes you'd be selling something you thought was an absolute bargain. Other times you'd be selling something you thought was an absolute abomination. <laughs> Remember one time we were selling a load of Versace perfumes. Right? And we price checked them at 39.99 that day on boots.com, right? And House of Fraser's gone but not forgotten. <laughs> Called Sports Direct now. <laughs> and we were selling the Versace perfumes at £7 a bottle, right? It was brilliant because everybody got an absolute bargain. The Versace perfumes flew off the shelves and I'm thinking, this job's easy. Then I look over and I see what my next product is. Producer pipes up in my ear and he's doing the giants because he's English. He said, uh, we've got the Eskimo eco-friendly freezer defrosting kit. <laughs> We're well, a rapid deployment trigger system. See, if we want 20 quid for this, James. Oh, okay. See, the thing is, right? See, by the time you add on 199 for the phone call, 0904 251 0100. <laughs> and then you add on 699 for the postage and packaging, that's you almost another 10 pounds on the price. That's you nearly 30 quid, right? For the Eskimo eco friendly freezer defrosting kit with a rapid deployment trigger system. And you know what that was? A plastic spray bottle filled with water. <laughs> you are actually cheaper defrosting your freezer with the Versace perfume. <laughs> Which to this day is one of the number one sellers in Glasgow for Price Shop TV. <laughs> now, there was some weird stuff that you used to have to sell. Like people always ask me, James, what is the weirdest thing you've ever had to sell on Price Shop TV? And my answer's always the same, my soul. <laughs> No, there's a few products that um, that spring to mind, right? Um, light up toilet seats. <laughs> Aye, toilet seats that would light up. A bad trip in the middle of the night, huh? We used to have to sell these things, right? That were spring-loaded dumbbells. <laughs> they were called shaker weights. <laughs> And you had to do that to make them work. It looked like you were sucking somebody off. But for me, the the strangest thing that I've ever had to sell, and I think everybody has seen one of these, by the way, it was a fly swatter shaped as a tennis racket with a wee button on the front. You used to have to press at the point of impact, right? And it would unleash like a metal wire with an electrical current through it so you can fucking zap the fly at the same time as whack it. <laughs> All you needed to make it work were two AA batteries and Andy Murray. <laughs> I think that's my uh, thing, I can see my producer flashing me there so um, if anyone wants to come and see me after the show, please do, because I've got 250 light-up toilet seats in the back of my car. <laughs> you can't miss me when I open the boot, it looks like a shit disco. <laughs> I think you guys are thinking